Okay, now we're going to um, hear from David Latelli, also known as Brown Butterbean, and he started the Brown Butterbean Motivation to help uh, motivate people to regain control of their lives. In February 2014, he weighed in at 210 kilograms. He was depressed, he hated his life and the body that he was trapped in. Since then, he's lost over 100 kilograms, which is just gigantic, and he's kept it off throughout his four-year journey. I did it the old-fashioned way, he said, with training techniques and nutritional advice I'd picked, over, picked up over the years through rugby league and boxing. His motto is, BBM works if you do. So we're going to hear from uh, Butterbean David Latelli, um, starting off with a video and then a few words from David. Thanks. It's time to shine. Give them what you buy, baby. Time to show them all you are. What's up, team? It's the Mighty Brown Butterbean. We're here at Colmar for one of our boot camps run by Tino and Gina. Now, these sets are amazing. They're for all shapes and sizes, and I want to take you right inside to show you what goes down. Oh, BBM has helped me a lot. Uh, I used to not comfortable around people, but BBM has made me come out and um, you know, spend a lot of time with a lot of people. Well, I am a proud mother of five um, children, and BBM has really made me appreciate uh, my health and well-being. I think people perceive someone as a Pacific Island mother of five to be a, a big person, busy at home with kids. I'm trying to change that perception where you know, I want my kids to be active. So I joined uh, BBM so two years ago after I had my third child. Um, I wasn't in a good space at the time. Um, I had gained almost 20 kgs, felt lethargic, hated my body, hated myself really. When Dave first called us up to run a session, I was not prepared mentally, but it was that push that he gave us that really made me think, hey, I can do it. So yeah, just under two years, I've lost um, about 102 kgs. Long story short, um, I was in hospital and um, the doctors told me, you know, if, if I'm not, not going to do anything about my weight, the next time they'll see me is in the morgue. So that really hurt me, yeah. and I knew when I, when I got to the hospital I had to do something about it. Big up to my partner because back then, man, well, had a lot of problems, yeah, you know, relationship problems. She's getting tired of doing stuff now because I'm always, um, babe, should we go to the mall? Should we go to, <laughs> go to places, you know, it's, 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 um, everything's um, different now, you know. Even my relationship with food, I only eat for the right reasons, you know. I was, you know, pretty big myself. I couldn't get off the couch for a long time. Until I met Dave and, you know, I think I've lost about 40 to 50 kgs now and I feel so great. When I first started, I couldn't really do many body drops, but now I can do them two minutes straight, you know, without stopping. So it just tells you how fitter I've become since um, joining BBM. You know, progressing through BBM has really changed my mindset. Um, I'm now a lot more confident. I love myself now, which was a hard thing for me to do, and it's helped me mentally and physically. Yeah, I've lost just over 42 kgs. Still there, still getting there. So true, the hardest part is just motivating yourself to actually turn up. But when you join such a, an encouraging and motivating group, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to stop, it's hard to leave. Get off the couch, man, and you know, do what I'm doing and just get yourself motivated and, uh, you know, and no excuses. If you don't start now, you'll never start. And it's just taking that first step. It's, it's daunting at first, but once you come to one of these sessions and you see the way um, the people welcome you in, you'll feel like you've been part of the family forever. So yeah. Boom! Just don't think. Just turn up and we will take care of you. No excuses! You know, it's, it's never too late. Just get up and start. Set some goals, be patient and work towards it and no excuses. So you've seen all of the lives that this program has changed. It could also change your lives. All you have to do is start. Stop thinking and start your journey. Awesome, let's give it a round of applause. Big round of applause for all those people there. We can do better than that, Taya, round of applause.
Oh, we can do better than that. Come on, round of applause or we'll do it at boot camp right here. Um, look, I've only got five minutes, so I uh, just want to touch briefly on where I'm from um, and, and then move into what uh, the work we're doing with BBM. Uh, I just want to also thank uh, Boyd and all the team for getting me here. And sorry to Andrea for stressing you out when I got here and said, what do you want me to talk about? So <laughs> I, don't, um, I don't plan anything I do. Uh, everything in BBM that you see now, their movement it is, has come from just out of my own journey. Uh, really, really quickly, uh, it's, it's an amazing opportunity to be here talking to so many doctors uh, and uh, you know, people in the medical professionals. When you, when you think of where I'm com coming from, you understand how much of a privilege and honor it is for me to be here. My father, he had two jobs that I remember. He was the president of a gang called the Mongol Mob, the Auckland chapter of that gang. So I was born, just things that were happening around me I thought were normal, definitely weren't. Uh, my father had two jobs. One was working on banks and one was a gardener. What do you think he was doing? Any, 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 any ideas? My father was a bank robber. Later on in life, he, uh, he tried his hand at gardening. What do you think he was growing? Medical marijuana. <laughs> uh, look, just, I just want to, I don't glorify that. I just let people know it so they understand where I'm coming from, so they can understand the obstacles that I've had to go through. And it's, it's not unique to me. Many of my people have to go through this sort of things. But um, five years ago, I came back to New Zealand. I was 2014. I was still in Australia at the time. And I walked out of the toilet and I had a gun pointed at my head. I was, up to some, uh, I was up to no good over there. I can't say what it was, because I'd never been caught, but, it was, uh, <laughs> but uh, I was up to no good. Uh, previous to that, I'd, I'd ended up, so I'm, I'm go, I'm, I'll start before that. I never used where I came from as an excuse. I played league all, rugby league all over the world, France, played rugby in Singapore, uh, played for North Sydney Bears and was contracted to Manly. Also ended up owning my own supermarkets from, um, from where I was from, which was a huge deal. Um, over in Australia, only supermarkets, and I, I laugh about it now. At the time, it wasn't funny. But um, when you have nothing, when you have nothing and all of a sudden have a, have a lot, um, you can go one of two ways. You can keep going really well, or you can be like those rappers like MC Hammer and stuff. You remember MC Hammer? What happened to MC Hammer? Yeah, he went broke. That's what happened to me. I, uh, I lost everything over in Australia. Um, you know, lost all my material things. Uh, but more importantly, I, I put a massive strain on, on my family. And a lot of the times we do these things for our kids. We justify it for our children. And all that did, that life did, was take me away from my children. Um, started living a really bad life, started piling on the weight. Uh, and it all culminated when I walked out of the toilet and had a gun pointed directly at my head. And now it's not like the movies where you think you're tough. You know, you, and, and you, you go, oh, that's, that's nothing. Let, let's just say it was very lucky I'd just come out of the toilet because if uh, it happened before I went to the toilet, there would have been a, an, another issue. <laughs> but uh, look, I, was mo I, I came back for the NRL 9s. I was very blessed. I grew up with a guy called Dave Higgins who runs Duco Boxing at the times. Uh, he started the NRL 9s and he, he said to me, Dave, you want to come back and watch this? This was just after I went through this ordeal. And I said, that's cool, I definitely want to come back and watch the nines, but I've got no money, no passport, and I can't fit in the economy. He thought I was just lying because I wanted a free business class trip. But uh, when he saw me, he realized that I wasn't lying, I couldn't fit in the economy. I was 210 kilos, I'd sweat walking five meters, um, and the whole time at the NRL nines, I never watched a game outside because I was just so hot, so sweating. I always had to carry a sweat towel, couldn't tie my shoelaces, in a bad way physically, but even worse uh, emotionally. I was just in a bad state. After that, he said, why don't you move back here and let's, don't know what you're gonna do, but let's move you back here and start, and we'll work out a plan. Well, that plan ended up me being a boxer. So if anyone's familiar with boxing, um, there's this white, quite a famous white boxer called Butterbean. His gimmick was he was really fat, but he could also fight. Well, when I came back, I was really fat, but I was brown, so they called me the Brown Butterbean, and that's how that happened. Um, I was very blessed to be fighting on all of Joe Parker's cards. At, at the time, I was playing up a character that I was a very arrogant boxer. Uh, you know, just when I first came out, I, I jumped on the scale at the, at the press conference and the scale said, error. I said, did you change the batteries on this thing? And the battery, I thought the batteries were flat, but uh, it said error and it set the stage. On a stage like this, I was up there and I was saying, I'm the toughest man in New Zealand, there's no one that can beat me. 
And the amount of hate that I got from that was, uh, it was just, I was getting death threats. Um, the whole time I was depressed and I hated my life. I'd lost my kids, but uh, I kept fighting through. And each fight I was lucky enough to fight on Joe's cards. I kept losing weight. And so amongst all of the hate mail I was getting, I'd start getting messages about how am I doing this? How am I losing all this weight? Because everyone wants to know the secret, eh? Who wants to know the secret? Some people here need to have their hands up. The secret is stop eating rubbish, stop drinking rubbish, and start moving. But people didn't want to hear that when I tell them that. You know, they were hoping I'd say, look, take this pill, drink this drink, and sit on your bum, and you're, you're going to lose heaps of weight. But um, it, it just wasn't like that. So what I did was I started a group called Butterbean Motivation on Facebook. And that group started off with just me as a place I could share my journey um, and be myself because in my normal, in my other social media outlets, I, I had to be a, a bit of a dick. Um, but in the group, I could be myself. And I started sending people there. And this group, which just started at me, is now uh, 11,500 members uh, all across New Zealand, all over the world, actually. It's a private group. I kept it private because, um, you know, there, at, there are a lot of people that, that, um, that judge. So we kept it private. Now, from that, I started our boot camps. Now, we're more than a boot camp. I always say that. But when I started it, well, it was a boot camp, so I had to call it that. So, um, but the boot camp started by my father-in-law asking, can I, help my, can, you, can I help his friend lose some weight? So we turned up to Trust Stadium and just, just outdoors, and we started. There was five of us. So from that five people at our first ever boot camp, we now have uh, about 21 boot camps, and we have 1,000-plus people coming, uh, coming to our free boot camps a week. Um, you know, we're doing some amazing thing as Boyd stands up. I'm just going to keep going, bro. So, <laughs> um, Look, we started a group called Butterbee Motivation. And what I want to touch on, just a couple of things to finish on, bro. Um, I, missed the, I missed training for this, so I'm going to keep going. Um, we, we started a program um, called the BBM Ward. Now, I just want to touch on that. We just finished our BBM Ward program last week. Now, that program, we lost 380 kilos. Uh, across 16 people that finished it out of uh, the 18 that started. 380 kilos, but that's not, as we've had other speakers said, it's not, it's not all about the weight loss, which it isn't. The other, the most amazing thing is, is that we've had three diabetics, type 2 diabetics on our program that just finished, no longer type 2 diabetic. Uh, we've had all of their high blood pressure, they all high, uh, had high blood pressure, all back in the normal range, all back in the normal cholesterol. Uh, so it, it's just an amazing thing. Now, we've got a lot of um, doctors here, and I just want to, just put this out to you guys. We must lead by example. And we just tendered for a, a DHB contract. We we're invited to tender um, for this multi PI obesity in adults. And I turn up there, and everyone's worried about data and money. You know? And uh, my uncle's there, he's the organized one helping me to keep calm. And, uh, and, and I just I had to say something. And this is why I want to finish on with you guys. Everyone tendering, you know, the DHB are trying to do their best. That's why they invited us. So, um, I, I looked around and I said, everyone here, I'm listening to you guys talk about data and money. No one's talking about the people we're supposed to be there to help. No one. I didn't hear one thing. So I said, I want to let you all know about the people we're trying to help. Because we are on the front line, on the, on, on the front line of this battle against obesity and everything related to it. I said, it's about a single mum whose daughter is in hospital, Starship Hospital with an incurable disease who'll text me, he'll text me personally and say, Dave, how do I eat healthy when I've got no food and I don't get paid for two weeks? It's about a Wurumu up here who was homeless for 16 years, who's put into a rest home, uh, and he's only, he's only young, you saw him up there, because he nearly died on the streets with open wounds on his legs. And now, finally, has hope. So you guys need to understand the people that you're trying to help, and that's why if they're serious about change, BBM will get this contract and will, it needs, BBM needs to be everywhere because what we do absolutely works. Thank you very much.